Super fighting robots! Megaman! Greetings, dear viewers, it is I, Drehorn. And before I get a copyright claim, I'm gonna stop doing that little bitty, eh, uh, theme? Song? Of another video game character. Mega Man. It's not like I'm gonna get copyright strike anyway, I don't have enough subscribers for that. Uh, speaking of, I do have a goal set. Um, remember quickly, 100 subscribers, I make a boss monster. Uh, not a mini boss, a full fledged boss. Something as big as Tiamat. Anyways, subscriber goals aside, let's talk about our next character, Mega Man. Now, Mega Man is. I'm not sure if he's technically iconic. Technically, he's lower on the charts than Mario and Sonic are. He's even lower than Digimon, I think. I know more about Digimon than I know more about Mega Man. But, anyway, let's go ahead and get on to Mega Man. The only way I know so much about Mega Man is because of Death Battle, but... Blabbering. Character, now. Strength is going to be a 10, Dexterity is our highest score because of our ranged weaponry. Constitution is going to be a 12, so will be Charisma. Intelligence and Wisdom are going to be our second highest stats at a 13. Because... Reasons I'm not going to get into just yet. Race is obviously going to be Warforged, since they are robots. This will give us a plus two to our constitution and a plus one to any stats we wish, and I wish it to be intelligence. That's why we get a nice steady 14 on three of our stats. Thanks to the Warforged, we get the constructed resilience, centuries rest, integrated protection features, as well as a skill proficiency in insight. And we get two languages, common and one other. I would say Elvish is our best bet. For background, according to Mega Man's lore, he was created by a well-known scientist. So, eh... Uh, other than folk hero, nobles are best bet, which will give us skills in history and persuasion. Tools will be one game set of choice, and we get another language. Uh, let's go with Undercommon, just because we got to understand our villain. We also get the feature Position of Privilege. Moving on to class, we need Artificer. And this is the only class we're going to be going into, thanks to Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, having everything that we need. You get a 1d8 for your hit die, you get H plus your constitution modifier for your hit points at first level. You get proficiencies in light armor, medium armor, shields, so on, so forth. Your tools are going to be the important one, not as important. I would say just grab woodcarver's tools, just in case you damage yourself. You're going to need to replace your own parts. For skills, I would recommend grabbing Arcana and Perception. Your spellcasting modifier is Intelligence, and you also get Ritual Casting. At level 2 Artificer, you get the Infuse Item feature, and at level 3 we get a Specialist. This is where Tasha's Cauldron of Everything comes in. We get Armorer. We get the tools of the trade. Armorer spells are going to be magic, missile, and thunder wave. We also get arcane armor and an armor model. For Mega Man, I would recommend the Infiltrator. You also get the feature the right tool of for the job. Level 4 Artificer gets an ability score improvement. If you want to go with the ability score improvement, I would recommend increasing your intelligence by two. However, you can also choose a feature, and I would recommend Gunner, because he is known as the Blue Bomber. So, having a Gunner feature would actually be useful. 
It will increase your dexterity by one, which is all right. Not very important, though. You also get proficiency with firearms, which we technically already get with the artificer. You also ignore the loading property of firearms, which is really just a game feature, so it makes sense to ignore that property. But the most important thing is being within five feet of a hostile creature does not impose disadvantage on your ranged attack rolls. Very important, since he does like to fire his blaster at close range. And that's a way to defeat some of your bosses. Thanks to the Armorer Specialist, we get an extra attack at level 5 Artificer. Level 6 Artificer gets a tool expertise, which doubles our proficiency with any tool we use. Which is perfect. Level 7 Artificer gets the Flash of Genius feature. And level 8 Artificer gets another ability score improvement, which I forgot to put in here. Give me a quick second. Okay, so, for your ability score improvement, I would just recommend going with a plus 1 to your Charisma, and let's go with a plus 1 to your Dexterity. Which one does that? There we go. Oops. Messed up there. It's supposed to be 12 still. Then the arrow, and then that thing there. How dare you. Alright. There we go. Fixed. So, plus one to your dexterity, plus one to your charisma. I'll explain that in a little bit. But, if you do not want the ability score increase, I would recommend grabbing Sharpsuiter. For those of you who have watched my videos before, I don't need to explain. Essentially, Sharpshooter will turn your... any of your ranged weapons into your charged attack. That's Mega Man uses. The charged blaster attack. Yes, it does decrease your uh, attack bonus, but it will increase your damage by 10 if you manage to hit still. So, not really a problem. Especially when you do not have disadvantage on your attack rolls if you're within five feet of your opponent. And that's actually where we're going to stop with our main levels so I can explain exactly why we're only doing Artificer. And that's because Artificers at 14th level get the Magic Item Solvent feature, which is Mega Man. You get to attune to up to five magic items instead of the normal, uh, if I remember correctly, three magic items. You also ignore the race, class, spell, and level requirements for attuning to or using magic items. Essentially, you could wield whatever weapon you wish, or any magic item that you wish which is the key feature in the Mega Man games. You defeat one of your foes, your uh, robot masters, and you are able to take on their ability. You are able to use their magic weapon, which is perfect. That is why this feature is key to your Mega Man build. Now, with that being said, that does leave six levels for you to use on other class features if you so desired. It's not necessary, but you could. And if you do, there is one class I would recommend, and that would be the Warlock, so long as your charisma is a 13 or higher. And for your Warlock, I would recommend the Ghost in the Machine Patron found in the Unearthed Arcana Modern Magics. For your Pact Boon, grab Pact of the Blade. 
and for your Eldritch Invocation, the Arcane Gunslinger found in the same Unearthed Arcana will work perfectly fine. Makes your Pact Women a gun. <laughs> Why would that not be useful for Mega Man? Especially when you're able to switch to different weapons that you've gained through your journey. Eldritch Might is going to be another useful one to make your attacks even more powerful, and getting any of the packed weapon invocations will do just fine. There are two from the Unearthed Arcana, but there's also the regular improved pack weapon. Well, viewers, I hope you enjoyed this little build. I do apologize for it being late, because of my recent car accident, which... Wow, it's only been a couple of weeks. But a week or so. Anyway, I don't have a car, so my parents have to drive me everywhere. It's annoying, but whatever. And I don't have the money, so... Ugh. So, recording is basically non-existent. So, I hope you enjoyed. And make sure to put in the comment section on who you want to see next. Until next time, this has been Drehan, and I am offline.